It's always good to see you. Something in her demeanor has changed. She's tired, consigned to her fate, to being here with you and what's to come. I understand. Just like that. No resistance. Her shoulders are slouched, her feet long and straight. I know. For what it's worth, I'm sorry. For all of this, for wasting your time. This is good. Clear the air first, between you two. Then move on to questions. Is it? Something is off here. Shush, I can't hear what she's saying. Why did you waste our time then? Because of the Hardys. I couldn't just dispense with them. They were only trying to help me. Out of the shit I'd gotten into. Is she implying the Hardy Boys are the law? You're right. There's more. You answer to the coalition government, and by extension, the moral intern. Briefly glancing over her shoulder to the sea, as she's done time and time again. You share a database with them. You send people to their courts. Just business, but bad business for some people in the moral intern. If I show up in your records, officer, they will find me. They will... What happens if they do? They will kill me, sir. If you file my name, take me in for questioning, enter me into the moral intern mill, well, then I'm fucked. For nothing. This murder didn't have anything to do with me. It's not nice, but it's not illegal. Not here in Ravishol, or even in Orania. What exactly did you do? Industrial espionage. I joined a business collective with the intention of betraying them. I did my job well enough to be asked to do it again. With a bigger company. The kind you really, really don't fuck with. I took their ledgers, two decades worth of accounting. I need the names of the companies involved, and who hired you. The job was Lou's doing County Savings Bank. They sound small, but they're part of the Lou Scop conglomerate. That was the second job. The first was some printer company. You wouldn't know them. But she really destroyed them. She still feels it. As to who hired me for the job, I don't know. But they're after me too along with Lou Scop and their friends in the MI. Once you're done in the competitive intelligence circuit, you don't have allies. You're radioactive. It is. Many people lost their jobs. Not just C-suite. Ordinary people. What I did to get to accounting... A lot of people got hurt. But that's just more of my shit you shouldn't have to deal with. You're solving a murder. That can wait. Look into her eyes. There's more. I... One of them killed themselves because of me.
how do you deal with anything? It's all just, how do you do it? There you have it, the way of the warrior. We were there, together, in bed, I mean. Okay. He was in a kneeling position. He had just entered me. I was on my back, looking at him. I heard the window behind me shatter, and I turned to look. There was a hole in the glass. I turned back to him. His eyes were looking through me, and his mouth was open, dumb. I could see. I could. Her chest rises and falls with each word. She keeps herself together and says it. I knew he was dead before he fell down on top of me. He was heavy. I pushed him off and he fell to the floor. There. He only had his boots on. I bit the pillow, not to scream, then ran downstairs. I waited for the second shot to come. For me. I thought there would be one. It never came. She's forgotten about her cigarette. The butt has burned right down to her fingernails. Oh. So am I. What time was this? When did it happen? It would help us if you could be as precise as possible. 11.30 to 12.15. I don't know the exact time. Around midnight. It's okay. Were you inebriated? Not as much as usual. He'd done a line, plus other things. I was drinking. Wait. Titus said she was gurning her jaw off much more than usual. Oh, yeah. I did one of his lines, just to clear my head. Did you hear or see the shooter in the course of this? No. Nothing. I was trapped. I was stuck in my room downstairs. I got some clothes on and crawled back up, drew the blinds. Blood was coming from his mouth. Not a lot. Just a little. He was still on the floor, slouched. I couldn't be there with him anymore, so I ran down and out of my room, into the hallway, down the stairs. I knew there would be people there. Run, woman. Run past them, and out into the streets where it's dark and people move, to the lorries at the intersection, as far as you can. I already ran. I ran from an entire isola. There is. I can't run any further. Not with these people. This is as far as it gets. Sylvie was tending the bar. A lot of people were there. The Hardys were at the table in front of the stage. I think the union box was full. Ruby was there too. They were having such a good time. I sat down and they all welcomed me. I didn't even have to say anything. Ruby knew something was wrong. Ruby? Ruby. You know, the leader. The leader? Of what? The Hardy Boys. Well, nominally, yes. Ruby's the one they go to when things happen, like things they need taken care of. She's the organizer. This Ruby, in her phrasing, is entrusted with great power. She trusts her. So do the others. Would you say she is the eighth hardy boy? Why not? Well, Ruby said let's talk upstairs. I showed her the room. I've known these people since December. They know my situation. 
that I can't leave a paper trail. Ruby was the first one I told. She said she'd take care of this. It's what she does, you know, take care of things. I helped her get the body to the bathroom. We used a belt to pull him up under the shower, to keep him upright. To produce lividity, matching a hanging? Yes. We completely missed the tampering. Looks like you got there in time. What was this, 20 minutes after death? Oops. About 20, yes. Ruby explained it would make the blood... You know what he does. Ruby went outside to talk to Titus and the boys. I was just looking at Lely in the bathroom. I had to put his clothes back on. His armor, too. It was tough, but I've seen him take it off and put it on many times. It took Ruby maybe half an hour to come back with Titus. I'd gotten him ready by then. They carried him out. I knew what they were going to do, make it look like a hanging. Ruby said they would. Ruby said to wait here. She also said I wouldn't see her for a while, that we should lay low or something. So I did. I don't know. I haven't seen her since. We will need to take this question to the Hardy Boys. Interesting. Why did this Ruby go through so much trouble to hide something someone else did? Look into this later. When he was shot? I may have. I don't know. I couldn't hear anything over the glass exploding. Because I'm an idiot. Which is an indicator of truth. Idiot. She's nothing of the sort. You have to understand. The people around here. No one was making the call and he kept rotting. And then they picked his clothes off. And that little fucker threw stones at him. Her jaw is clenched. Her throat moves. It takes all her strength not to cave in and sob. Once. Just one time. He kept throwing stones at him for three days. I could hear the thud. Thud. So I called you. I hope with all my heart it's not the last thing I do in Ravishol. She definitely called the cops. That was task complete. It could not have been a lie. That is impossible. Last week, Angus and Titus's brother, I think he's called Tibbs, took care of it. You should have another look at that window after this. Reconstruct the scene. It's right there. Yes, you see the glass sparkling out of the corner of your eye. That's the first thing that went through my head when I heard the glass break. I thought they'd found me. They've killed him to punish me. All last week, I've tried not to talk to anyone or be seen with anyone so they wouldn't be hurt. I've come to understand, however, this is paranoia. What happened didn't have anything to do with me. We can't go after Loose Cap. Not yet. There are other Saner leads. I don't ask you to, Lieutenant. But there's one thing I know, is that you'll get nothing from there. What? Why would I put myself through this insanity? Get myself cornered like this? He wouldn't have died if it weren't for me. I know that. But I would never hurt him. It could have been a desire murder. Maybe an act of jealousy. He was a serviceman. He must have had a gun. Somewhere. 
lying around, close to her hand. Now, you guys suddenly have theories pouring out, when they're obviously just stabs in the dark. Like what? She nods silently. She doesn't even smoke. Just picks up the cold coffee and holds it in her hands. Um... He's thinking, are we done here? Or maybe you should take her to the station for safekeeping. She lied to you. And she's a flight risk. No, that won't be necessary. Just leave her alone. She's been through enough. She doesn't need this police brutality. Multiface, I'm beginning to doubt your judgment. Are you sure you're not sleeping on the post? You have to wake this one up with force if you want to continue pushing her. As you look back, you think, so love did do him in, after all. If it weren't for her, he would not have been there. The shot would not have connected with his soft plate. She's silent, holding on to her coffee mug. No vapor rises from it. It's cold. Remember this silence. The lady is dangerous. People suffer around her. Yeah. I'd like to think he didn't love me, or that it was chemically induced and not real. Easier that way. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>